prior example problem went over being able to compute the entropy change of a system, right? The entropy change being the entropy at state two minus the entropy at state one that occurs during a process. Now, if a process, if I want to write down my second law here for a closed system, I would get that right entropy transferred by heat plus entropy generated equals the change in entropy of a system for a closed system of a, for that's reversible so if you remember reversible s gen is zero and adiabatic q there's no heat transfer so entropy transferred by heat is zero if the system is closed <clears throat> internally reversible and adiabatic the entropy change ends up being zero. And that is called a process that is isentropic. Many engineering devices, such as pumps, turbines, nozzles, and diffusers, which are essentially adiabatic in their operation, are approximately isentropic. And that isentropic process is a process that can be used in order to equate the maximum possible efficiency because if you remember, we went ahead and assumed that the entropy generation is zero. So if the entropy change is zero, that means that the entropy at the final state is equal to the entropy at the initial state. So following, let's go ahead and look at entropy diagrams. Two diagrams that are commonly used in second law analyses are temperature entropy, temperature on the y-axis, entropy on the x-axis, or TS diagrams, and enthalpy entropy, which would be H on the y-axis and entropy on the x-axis. So if you look at the definition of entropy, The heat transfer corresponds to a differential area on a TS diagram, right? So if you look at, um, you actually go ahead and take this differential and equate it that the heat transfer is equal to TDS. If you look at a TS diagram, the area underneath the curve is equal to the whole total heat transfer. So the total heat transfer during an internally reversible process is determined by integrating this differential. So the area under a TS diagram represents the heat transfer during internal reversible process. This is analogous to the reversible boundary work, right, being represented by the area underneath the PV diagram. So the performance integration, one needs to know relationship between temperature and entropy during a process. Here are some examples of special cases. I want to look at a constant temperature process. Of course, the heat transfer would equal T delta S, right? Because the Q, I would integrate T over the, air, uh, over the entropy change. And if temperature is constant, the result would be T delta S. If the process were isentropic, if you notice on a TS diagram, isentropic would mean constant entropy. That would be represented by a vertical line. In that case, the change in entropy is zero, and so the integral would result in the heat transfer to be zero. So with all of this, what is entropy, right? Entropy itself, can be viewed as a measure of molecular disorder or molecular randomness. So, for example, if you look at the three states of manner, the entropy of a gas has more disorder and therefore has a greater entropy than that of liquid, which has a greater entropy than that of solid. The positions of the atoms of a gas are less predictable than the positions of an atom of a solid, so the entropy would be higher. 
to each state of microscopic equilibrium, there corresponds a large number of possible microscopic states of molecular configurations. The entropy is related to the total number of microscopic states for a system called thermodynamic probability. And the Boltzmann relationship expresses the entropy in terms of this probability. We're not necessarily going to go over that. I just, um, but to, to understand that entropy itself is a measure of disorder. So earlier we found that the change in entropy could be defined by integrating um, the heat transfer over the temperature along reversible path. This calculation requires again the relationship between Q and T, which is often difficult to obtain. So what we're going to do is develop some expressions. We're going to develop here uh, other expressions for finding entropy changes. So what we're eventually doing here is we're looking again at the different aspects of a second law balance, right? Second law being the change in entropy of a process is equal to the sum of the entropy transfer by heat plus that generated. This is for a closed system, right? I haven't done open systems yet. But to find this quantity, this delta S, right? What, a lot of times what we're doing is that we're going to try to find the amount of entropy generated during a process by equating the difference between, if I go ahead and solve, for example, for this S gen in this second law balance, I would get the entropy generated for a closed system is equal to the change in entropy of the system minus the sum of the heat transfer. So that means that for example, if I have heat transfer to the system, if my entropy change is greater than that of which is transferred to the system, the difference has to be attributed to the entropy generated. This is for closed systems. Remember, I haven't done entropy transfer by mass yet. I'm only dealing with closed systems at this point. So what often we do to figure out the amount of generated entropy is to first be able to calculate the change in entropy of the system by looking at the property entropy, right? Entropy at state one or state two minus that of state one gets us the entropy change. So if I can calculate the entropy change and subtract the entropy transfer to that, I can often find the amount that's generated and therefore quantify the amount of irreversibility going on. So what we're going to do at this point is go through these relationships called TDS relations. And these TDS relations allow us to be able to use uh, expressions in different ways to compute the entropy of the system, which allows us to solve for one portion of a second law balance. So let's go ahead and do that. So consider the differential form of the conservation of energy expression for a closed system undergoing a reversible process. You get that. The heat transfer for an internally, internally reversible process minus the work is equal to du, right? That is a differential form of the first law. Now, we're going to recall that the heat transfer is TDS, and we're going to recall that the work done is PDV. We're going to substitute this into our first law in differential form, and we're going to substitute this into our first law. In differential form. If we end up doing that, combining those expressions and solving for TDS, this whole thing becomes TDS is equal to du plus PdV. This is known as a TDS relationship, or the word for this equation is called the Gibbs equation. Why is this important? Well, the Gibbs equation allows us to, enter, to solve for TDS and eventually solve for DS, which gives us the change in entropy, right? So let's go ahead and express that in, in um, on a per mass basis, right, in specific form. So this is Gibbs equation in specific form. Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and derive a second TDS relationship by recalling that enthalpy is equal to PU plus P nu. 
if I differentiate this, right, and apply the chain rule, just bear with me. I can go ahead and do some algebra, take this, substitute it into Gibbs equation, and by combining it, I get a second TDS relationship as TDS is equal to dH minus nu dp. Okay, great. Why are these important? Why is this equation, Gibbs equation, this first TDS relationship, and the second TDS relation, why are these important? These relations are important since they relate entropy changes of a system to other properties. Right, these TDS relations are property relations, therefore independent of the type of process. Again, let's go back to a second law analysis for a closed system, right? The change in entropy, the entropy change from state two to state one, has to be equal to the, the, the sum of the entropy transferred to or from the system plus that generated. So again, when we're doing a second law analysis, what we're trying to do is in a sense quantify the amount of irreversibilities present in the process and that is largely done by this s gen right that is a process dependent function that has a value that depend the higher the value the more irreversibility is present during the process to calculate this s gen a lot of times what we do and again this is for closed systems is we calculate the delta s and then you subtract out all the entropy transfer terms right so if i were to solve for this I would go ahead and calculate this, calculate that, I'd the entropy change, the entropy in state two, I get two properties, I get that, entropy in state one, subtract one from the other, I get the change in entropy of the system. And then I subtract all the entropy transfer terms, and that result is the amount of generated entropy. But the, prob the thing is, is that ch calculating the change in entropy can be challenging sometimes. So what I do is that I developed these two TDS relationships, right? If you notice, DS, if I integrate that, becomes delta S. I'm able to actually use these relationships to calculate my delta S. So let's go ahead and see and take this a little bit further. So I have my two TDS relationships that we just did. TDS is equal to DU plus P d nu and my second relationship was t ds equals dh minus nu dp i'm going to go ahead and solve for ds right i'm going to go ahead and take uh, those two equations and i'm going to divide through by temperature so i get ds is equal to d over temperature plus p d nu over temperature and the other one's going to be ds equals dh over temperature bear with me there's a reason why i'm doing this minus dp over temperature now the edge we change during a process can be determined by integrating either of these equations between the initial and the final states the following two pieces of information are required to perform the integration so if i want to perform these integrations i need to find these as functions of temperature so for example I need to find the relationship between du or dh as a function of temperature. So an example is for an ideal gas, right? For the specific case of the substance being an ideal gas. I assume that it's water, it's not an ideal gas, so I can't use this relationship. But for an ideal gas, I know that du is equal to CVDT and dh is equal to CPDT, right? And I also have an equation of state called the ideal gas law that I can substitute into it. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So if I do this for an ideal gas, I can go ahead and, and substitute P over T as R over um, nu, and I can substitute DU as CVDT, right? And so I can go ahead and integrate that, and I find internal energy as a function of temperature, and use the ideal gas law to make substitutions so that I can integrate this and get delta S as a function of something. What if it's an incompressible substance, right? What if it's incompressible? Well, the changes, du is cdt, and cp and cv are equal to just c. And if you recall, for an incompressible substance, there's no change in volume over pressure, so d, d nu is equal to zero. 
So that changes our DS relationships as well, right? So again, let me show you what I mean. If I rewrite, if I go ahead and uh, rewrite um, DS is equal to DU over temperature plus um, P D nu over temperature. Well, D nu goes to zero, and D U can be equal to C D T. So therefore, I get that D S is equal to C D T over temperature. Therefore, if I integrate that, I get that the change in entropy for a solid is equal to the specific heat over temperature times dt. And if I assume temp that specific heat is independent of temperature, i.e. constant specific heat, I get that delta S is equal to, oh, excuse me, I get the delta S is equal to S2 minus S1. I integrate this, I get the specific heat times the natural log of T2 over T1 by integrating this function. This all started with a TDS relationship, making substitutions according to the assumption that it's incompressible, yeah, that it's an incompressible um, uh, substance. Right, if I have an isentropic process, it follows that S2 is equal, or T2 is equal to T1, and then that relation will uh, yield an entropy change of zero, right? So we'll go ahead and stop this video at this point before going ahead.